Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Check out our brand new app and get access to our new pharmacology and med surge mastery courses. Plus, a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Join for free. Click the link in our description below. Now for lower respiratory drugs, we have two teams, the BAM team and the SLAM team. So BAM is for our bronchodilators that act to dilate the bronchi in the lungs. And SLAM is our anti-inflammatory agents to soothe the inflammation. So guys, let's start with our bronco team, BAM. First off, we have B for beta-2 agonists. These guys end in buterol, like L-buterol and levolbuterol. So guys, just remember the B in buterol is used for brutal asthma attacks. Since it's the first drug we use during severe asthma attacks. And it's the fastest acting bronchodilator. So the NCLEX keyword here is, it's the only rescue inhaler during acute asthma attacks to be used before steroid inhalers. That's always a common NCLEX question. Now guys, big caution here. Selimetrol is a beta-2 agonist as well, but it's a slower acting, not a rescue inhaler. So not to be used during an acute asthma attack since it ends in terol and not buterol. Now it's used commonly with a combination of steroids for longer term control of moderate to severe asthma. Now a common NCLEX question is do not use fluticasone or selimetrol for the first signs of acute asthma attack. So during acute asthma attacks guys, we give three drugs and to be honest, sequence is key on the NCLEX. So use the memory trick AIM for the acute asthma attack. A for albuterol, which is always used first during brutal asthma and not selimetrol, which is the slower acting one. I is for ipratropium, always used second, which we'll be covering next. And M is for methoprednisolone, brand name selimetrol, which is our steroid always to be used last since steroids act so slow. And it has the word prednisolone, which kind of sounds like prednisone. So that's how you know it's a steroid. Now for the mechanism of action, these are beta-2 agonists, which activate beta-2 in the lungs, which dilates the bronchi, resulting in increased airflow. But it also activates beta-1 in the heart, which makes the heart go crazy fast. So the common side effect is a rapid heart rate. So just think albuterol amps up the body. Now, expected side effects for albuterol. Just think of the three T's. T for tachycardia and palpitations, T for tremor, and T for tossing and turning at night. Keyword for exams are insomnia and difficulty sleeping. So teach patients not to take it at bedtime. And guys, don't let the NCLEX trick you. Commonly chosen distractors, not constipation. That's a side effect for opioid pain meds and not hives. That's totally an allergic reaction, not expected finding. Now patient education, a little side note for asthmatic patients. We always avoid beta blockers that end in LOL like atenolol, which can cause bronchospasms. And avoid NSAIDs like naproxen and ibuprofen, which can worsen asthma. Now during an attack or a severe asthma attack, we instruct patients to take two to four puffs every 20 minutes for three rounds. Now the big key point here, guys, write this down. If it doesn't work after three doses, then you notify the HCP. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.